using meditation. So, uh, and I think that's something very special and uh, we'll explain it in a few minutes. But before we do, we'd like to uh, entertain any questions and we'll give you answers. So anything about your sadhana in the last month that you have any questions about, anything about your meditation? The brother Al and sister Roseanne, we made it. We made it to the 1,008 hours oh, of thank offering God. to Swami for the Aradhana. We just thank crossed you. it day before yesterday. I was oh, I wasn't sure that we will be able to do it as a team, but this entire team, whoever participated, were able to contribute that 1,008 hours. Beautiful. And so I so think we'll have more than that uh, because yeah, 24th yeah. is still coming. You can add 50 more hours for my meditational sadhana in the last 30 days, okay. if you would like. Yeah. I didn't have a chance to put it on the, on the pro, you know, on the Excel the sheet. sheet. Yeah. I thank you for that idea. It really motivated all of us to do things. Awesome. Swami's grace is there. When we um, do our spiritual practices with intensity, our sadhana with intensity, and deliberation and sincerity as you all have done in this last several months, six months, almost four months, I think, I'm not sure exactly how many months it's been, then Swami will absolutely respond. You've taken a thousand steps towards him and he will take a thousand and eight steps actually, and he will take a hundred times that towards you. Each one of you. So, any questions? That's wonderful. Any questions? Any Anybody have any questions about their side? Are you able to mute, unmute and speak? Because I muted everybody. I'm not sure anybody's got any trouble unmuting. Please chat if you're not. You can raise your hand in the Zoom app if you like. And, and Sairam, uh, brother, I'll, uh, uh, I have to yeah. confess, you know, it's not been very regular, but I've been trying to do it on a regular basis. But what can I do to keep me motivated and keep me, um, you know, with a regular, you know, that's a simple question. Uh, I think it may be useful for everyone, Sairam. My, my answer is going to be very horrifying for you all. At any moment, Swami can call us home. And what we will do until he does is as important as the breath of life. So you may be young, you may be old. We never know when the call comes, but we want to be waiting and ready. And it shouldn't be when we're 70 or 75 years old that we all of a sudden get scared into doing our sadhana intensely should be now. Shankara was 14 or so, Swami was 14 or so, Ramana Maharshi was 16, when they were fully liberated beings. So why wait? And the only thing that Swami says is the difference between practice, spiritual practice and uh, actually accomplishing or knowing, because you're always who you are. There's never been a moment you haven't been, or any of us, knowing who we are. The only difference is intensity of sadhana. That's the only difference. And what kind of intensity is it? It's the intensity of saying, I'm diving deep into my inner core and realizing that the source of all my thought, the source of the om, the source of all the mantras that exist, the source of all bhajans that are, is my own inner God self. Swami within me. He's always there. God is always in this side. Our soul is one with that. So it's the inner directed or the direction, inner direction of identifying with the soul, the light of oneness, rather than the material body and all its needs and all its desires and all its attachments. Turning from that, we turn within and identify with it our God self. That's why he asks us to do that more and more intensely. And that is what keeps our sadhana going. But sometimes you, you need to eat a chocolate bar. Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs>
the only thing that helps is to have a schedule which you know if you have little kids sometimes it's not so easy to do but you, most for most people you can develop some kind of schedule where the meditation is there in the schedule and you just do it automatically it's not a decision it's just there what holds us back only the material senses hold us back the mind holds us back that's all that holds us back but what does it hold us back from it's really the clouds that are covering the sun these attachments these desires the mind they're just clouds covering the sun the sun inner consciousness of oneness is always there it's just hidden by those clouds penetrate the clouds you will find swami you will find him He's in you. He is you. Okay. Yeah. Next, next question. Well, if no one else is going, I will go. Um, I've, I had a very strange um, meditation this last week. Um, Sometimes there, sometimes it's been very difficult, and uh, sometimes uh, it's been very nice. And when it's very good, I can feel myself as if I'm rising above my head, and I can feel the lightness of rising above my head. Well, one day this week, I felt as if I was rising above my head, and then all of a sudden, I moved down to the center of my chest in a great big it's like it it's like an explosion of light and sun and and it just it was like heat and light and uh it it just it's it just was there for a while and swami was there i know because i thanked him and i said well what is i didn't know what it was but i wonder if you have any idea of what this was because i was i didn't go down through my body i didn't come mm -hmm. down through my head Beautiful. Is that making any sense? Yes. Okay. I'm going to let Roseanne answer this first. Okay. I'm going to take a moment. Okay. And I'll be right back. And then I'll answer it also. Follow okay. Roseanne's explanation. She knows. So it was your heart center of being. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. Well, we have, we're not only the physical body, so it's not so important to be thinking where we might be, you know, in terms of our physical body, which chakra we're, we're at. But the heart center for it to be open is wonderful. It's the source of love and, and connection with God. And then the trick is to keep it open all the time because it's very hard to, you know, we, we get tested and we react to people and our heart closes. So, the thing that we want to do is is to have it open more and more and more and more. So that just takes the the practice of of loving people and loving God in a very automatic way, where we just keep working at it and working at it. And obviously, you have been working at it because that center, the the center of love, that chakra of the heart just open very it could open s slowly subtly sometimes you have pain there um or it could just be very fast and, and so no one should think oh that didn't happen to me you know it, it's not something it's the same <laughs> person oh, no. no but you know i've i've always done breathing through my heart chakra breathing into my i've always done that and i've always felt energy so I've always felt that, but this was completely different. This was, right. I mean, it was like an explosion, literally. It felt like right. I was exploding out. Yeah. And there was a big ball of energy right here. I, Beautiful. The, well, the, the Kundalini is the power of the universe. It's, um, I, I have a friend uh, who, she was meditating and she started sort of stretching her neck out like this. And then 
because she was in the middle of meditation, her Kundalini got activated and she, she had a, a real problem because her neck wasn't straight. It's very important to, uh, to always let that energy flow and it'll just flow however God wants it to flow. And we are not attached to it happening again. It's, it's totally Swami's will. Swami is the meditator. We're not doing anything. So we, we sit at meditation and we do our work. And whatever happens is the divine grace of God to show us ourself. And that light and power that you felt, that's your real self. It's the other stuff is, is just, it's nice. It gives you faith. You know, when you breathe in your heart and you feel energy or feel some light, but that energy, you know, when, when you think about how Sai Baba exists, I mean, he, he's the creator, the, just the sustainer and the destroyer and of the universe. And so that energy, you know, is just a tiny fraction of his energy, but we get a glimpse of it when we when our mind stops and, and our energies rise to God. So it, it's wonderful. It's a really wonderful thing. And, and just thank Baba, you know, that, and, and try to keep that energy always, you know, because that openness, the open heart is, is our reality. And that's where we could be all the time. How's that? so i want to add to that this thought experiences in meditation are just that experiences in meditation they come they go that which comes and goes is not the permanence of the oneness of love the oneness of god the atma that which comes and goes is inspirational it's motivational gets us to want more it's exciting it's like a carrot dangling in front of us but ultimately the oneness of love the atma the source of om the source of existence the source of being that is who we are now that just, can take some time just sitting here it's like it's all starting and I can feel an oven turned on right here. Good for you. And it just, you know, and I'm not meditating. Beautiful. So the yogis used to use sandal paste on their foreheads when this would happen. <laughs> because they would become, they would call it the dancing, uh, in their cells they felt da Shiva dancing, this energy of the Kundalini, this energy of the spiritual uh, energy, in, Inner activation. Better up here than anywhere. Than anywhere uh, else. Better up here than anywhere else. Um, right. But then, what is happening here when I meditate? Where is here? Above my head. Okay. You know? So the thing is that the chakras what? are not fully opened yeah. while we're meditating. They're open to the degree of our purity. So each chakra has impurities from our karmic residue of experiences in past lives in this life. So each chakra gets purified as we meditate. And we can feel above our heads the energy because that's the eighth chakra. That's the first chakra in the soul body, the causal body. So the fact of the matter is, these chakras all are getting activated, but not fully open yet because there's still impurities within them. So you could feel the energies going through your body. You can feel the uh, top of your head, the light at the top of your head or the expanse at the top of your head. Simultaneously, the heart has to open more. The heart has to be purified more. So there's two steps to meditating and spiritual sadhana, two steps. The first step is the infusion of the divine in our awareness or the awareness that we are not the body, the mind, but we are a deeper peace, a deeper love, a deeper light of consciousness. That's the first step, that's infusion. 
The second step is purification. And the purification occurs in the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is directly affected and attached to all the subconscious energy centers of our body. And there are more than seven. There's, those are the major ones. So um, they, the inner neurological flow, the pranic flow that occurs through the meridians of the body all have to actually release these impurities, be purified. How do we do that? That is the question. So far, Swami said, okay, sing bhajans. That's a purification because you're saying that singing the name of God in a group, especially. So that's a more unified, uh, multiplied. The, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Purification of a spiritual practice. So sing bhajans. Love all, serve all. Recognize God in everyone through action. Love in action purifies. It purifies very fast. Saying the name of God in the mind helps the mind focus on the inner self rather than the outer self or the material world. That's a purification. That's uh, another way. Another one is this, what we're going to share now, subconscious cleansing meditation. Back in 1971, in the Sanatana Sarati, we can show you this is the Sanatana Sarathi page of 1971. Swami shared this subconscious cleansing meditation and it works really well. And I'll read it to you now. Or actually, Roseanne, she's such a good reader. Oh, before we do it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's just read it. All right. So listen very carefully. I, I hope my, my, uh, I'm going to put up my volume, put up your volume so you can all hear really well. Here we go. This is just, we're going to listen intellectually, just hear it and get it in your mind what it's over the overview. Baba told me thus, children of humanity, remember that you are created in my image and likeness. Perfect. Live up to this image in every way, in all places. Live like masters. Walk this earth with your head held high, your spirits soar, your hearts open to love, and believe in yourself and God within you. Then all will go well. Earth is but a manifestation of my being, made out of my life. Wherever you look, I am there. Wherever you walk, I am there. Whomsoever you contact, I am that person. I am in each, in all my splendor. See me everywhere. Talk to me and love me who am in each. Then from each, I will respond and bring you into the glory. You cannot see me in one place and not in another, for I fill all space. You cannot escape me or do anything in secret, for there are no secrets with me. Live, live, live in perfect accordance with my laws and wonders will result. Think now, does error clog free flowing essence of my being through you? Does error clog the free flowing essence of my being through you? Ask me this moment to reveal to you your errors in the silence of your meditation. Let old memories well up in you. For my subconscious in you, old patterns, old forgotten feelings and thoughts. Now plunge them into the ocean of light. Burn them from the consciousness so that you may be true emblems of my being. Right now, visualize my burning flame rising higher and higher as it burns through you. It is a flame that is cooling 
cleansing and healing. It soothes the hidden sorrow, leaves you calm and quiet. Rest in my love. Let all that has been through your many lives up to this day, let all that you have been through in your many lives up to this day melt away in my redeeming light. Children of my being, dissolve your sorrows and fears in me. Let me efface all your karma. Come back into my consciousness, which is your own true consciousness. Let your petty human self fade away right now as you come to me who am your inner self. You are now my radiant, glorious self, no longer separate. Melt with me, merge with me, become me. November 1970. November 1970, this appeared on 71. November 1970, this appeared in the Sanatana Sarati. Now at that time, Professor Kastori, uh, beloved Professor Kastori, Swami's biographer uh, and one of his closest, were, was in charge of the Sanatana Sarati. And every issue Swami looked over personally and approved what was written in it. This was something when it says, Baba told me thus, these were the words that came to Hilda Charlton, who was the first Westerner to come to India and meet Swami, one of the first. One of the first. And in 1965, and um, she had spent 17 years in India. And on the 18th year, she spent one year with, with Swami. And Swami um, invited her to have a room next to Kastori and in Prashanti. And in Whitefield, she lived in the women's wing of Swami's bungalow, his inner house, not his, the houses around his house, but inside. And uh, when she finally went home, which Swami sent her home to help the young hippies like myself, and others at the time in 1968, 67, 68, 70, um, learn how about Swami and, and how to follow spiritual teachings. Uh, she had sent this message that she wrote down when she heard it in meditation. Uh, Baba told me thus. And Swami adopted it in Sanatana Sarathi for everyone to practice. And when Roseanne and I stayed at in Prashanti and with Swami and in Whitefield and, and Cody Canal and Uti and all those places in, in 1988 to 89, uh, Swami permitted Roseanne and I to share meditation every day after Darshan uh, at 10, from 10 to 11 a.m. with the foreigners and some uh, nationals came too. So, and whoever wanted to come we led these meditations that we're leading for you tonight in the same way. And one of the days that we would do, we would do seven different meditations on the seven days. And we would rotate it, repeat it every week. And um, one of them was this subconscious cleansing meditation. And from the interview room, Swami sent people to participate in this at times. So this was totally Swami's grace, but just for your awareness this was personally approved and uh, supported by swami to practice the this meditation this subconscious cleansing meditation which we're about to share with you any questions any thoughts Sarah, i have a question yes uh, you know, I often, uh, I hate to say this, but get sick after any sort of cleansing, uh, whether it's homeopathy or, you know, um, any of anything like that. And it's pretty, pretty difficult after that, both physically, especially physically and mentally. 
So I'm a bit concerned about it here, even though Swami said, come into me. Um, I know one has to get rid of what's there in the subconscious, but having been through so much in this lifetime, I'm afraid for it all to surface and uh, get very sick, if you can understand do, that. Do you get physically sick or emotionally sick or mentally sick? What kind of sick do you get? Uh, mostly physically, but of course, with that, there's the mental and emotional. So that, that you get physically, like you get weak and diarrhea and all that stuff? All that stuff. Okay. Drink a lot of water. Yes. A lot of water. That's the number one. Yeah. Electrolytes. Water. A lot of yeah. electrolytes. Number two. This I'm going to share with each and every one of you. Yeah. You who have been here, there's 30 of us now. 30 mm -hmm. people went through six months or so of meditational process sadhana. Especially the people who have survived these six months and come to be here right now. This is especially true of. You've all been yogis in past life. Not immediately past, but in some recent lifetime, you've all been yogis. Now you're householders in the Western world. How do I know you all were yogis? Because you're still meditating. You were attracted to meditation, the meditational yani path, the bhakti path of meditation, and yani path merge in meditation. And you all know Swami. You can't just know Swami. 55 or 60 million people in the world know Swami and follow him or have followed him at one time or another. That's not possible. What about the other seven, eight billion? Why only us? Swami chose, Swami knows. We've all been yogis in the past. That means that in this Western world, there's a lot of impurity, experientially, sensually, every way that you can possibly imagine, food, water, air, especially now polluted. When you start meditating, you're going to purify. So make sure your diet is good. No sugar. White sugar is a drug. The yogis, the yogis won't even eat it. I offered vanilla wafer cookies to a yogi in Rishikesh, and he said, I can't eat that. If I eat that, I'll have to wear a winter coat again. <laughs> what do you call me? He had practiced just wearing his, like, like what Swami wears. And it took him seven years to be hot enough to just be that way all year round. So sugar is a drug. It depletes the neurological system. It depletes the nutritional system. It's going to cause problems. Also the pre and probiotics of your intestinal flora, which the yogis support through a little curd and a very strict regimen of non uh, of vegetarian food and also sattvic food, not even rajasic food, which is the spices. You know, we, you can't get away with not eating spices in the Western world now with all the, the influences or throughout the world being here. But the fact of the matter is we can eat better. We can drink pure water, not the ones in plastic bottles because they have plastic molecules in the water, the leaching, that's not good for you. So. You, if you're going to be meditating and you're going to do intense sadhana, you have to be taking care of the temple of the body in a better way so that when you do the purification that occurs in meditation and will, the body doesn't get overwhelmed with toxins that get released. So, and the body should be strengthened through yoga. Hatha yoga originated because the, the yogis were meditating so long that they couldn't, when they got up, they couldn't walk and their limbs were getting weak. So they devised a way of strengthening their bodies while being able to meditate for long hours at the same time or do intense sadhana. They invented Hatha yoga. Then somebody doing Hatha yoga realized you could do this like a meditation with the breath and you can transcend even during Hatha yoga because if you do it in a meditative way. So then it took on that dimension. Um, so just think about that and think about your life and try to balance it better with non-toxic substances. You can't get away from the air because the air is toxic. So you're gonna have to deal with balancing it through food and water not being toxic. And that's really important. And Swami has emphasized these, I, these nutritional aspects of sadhana. Yeah. Thank you so much. The worst thing is fear though. 
Fear will interfere with sadhana. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't believe the body. The ego will try to survive. It's been around for millions of years. Each one of us have an ego that's been around millions of years. However, we evolved to this point. And it will do anything to continue surviving. So if you're not going to pay attention to the mental stuff that it tries to do, like, oh, this meditation takes too much time, or this is too hard for me, or something like that, which the ego is talking, it will go through the body and try to disrupt the body so that you won't meditate. It doesn't want to dissolve. But in fact, the ego is a complete illusion. It's nothing but smoke and mirrors. It doesn't actually exist. The sense of individuality and separate reality is just that, a complete illusion. But to get there takes spiritual practices. So don't let fear stop you. Mm. Especially physical ailments. Never let them stop you. If you're, if you're laid up in bed and you can't do it, lie down and do it. Never give up the name of God. Never. Never say, oh, that's too hard for me. I can't. I'm afraid my body can't take it. Swami will take care of the body. And the, the other part of that is that um, in purifying the mind and the past um, some, some scars, the physical body will heal e more easily because of the, the things that are sort of caught in our, you know, the, the different causes, the, the bodies that we have. There's the purification of all those bodies, and just not, not only the physical body, so that in the purification of the subconscious, is it allows our physical body to, to heal also. So it might actually make your, your physical healing easier. So there's a saying that when we suffer physically, this suffering is not unto death, but unto God. Because mm. physical suffering does occur through sodden, for spiritual practices at times. Right. We all, I always say, and Hilda taught me this, and Swami taught me this also very strongly, this physical suffering is unto God, not unto death. Mm. All right. Very helpful. Thank you so much, both of you. Sorry. All right, let's go. So Roseanne's going to start this off and I'll come in with the subconscious portion. So we'll start off like regular meditations just to get centered and to... Um, Did you want this? Yeah. Okay. I just, uh, before we start, I just want to uh, explain how Swami talks about the nature of, of the Atma, that we have the manas, the mind, we have the buddhi, the intellect, we have our samskaras, our mental propensities from past and present lives. And that oh, this, this is a purification of, of, of those samskaras. He says, the vastness of the mind is indescribable. It can travel to any distance in a second. Just think you can think, you know, you can think and you'll be in India or think you can, you know, you'll be back in Florida or wherever or in a traumatic experience or, you know, the, the, the thoughts take us back into those things. And that's the, the nature of the, the mind. And then he says that it's tremendously powerful, our mind. Therefore, it is the inner self that operates through the mind and performs all activities in the world. So he says the second power is the intellect. It is full of illumination. It discriminates between good and evil without giving room to selfishness. So we have the mind and then we have the, the intellect that can look at the mind and discriminate between right and wrong, real and unreal. 
And then the third is the power of samskara. Its results are experienced not only in this birth, but also in future births. Samskara is the giving up of evil and cultivating goodness in thought, word, and deed. So we understand how the mind is a bundle of thoughts, but they're very powerful thoughts. So through the discrimination of the intellect of the buddhi, we are able to discriminate what is real and what is unreal. You know, are our fears real or is our faith real? Is our desire for comfort real or is our going beyond duality of, of being centered and in peace? Is that what's real? And so through incarnations of refining ourselves and looking for God, getting more and more, looking at the Atma itself without all the, the mind and all the subconscious. And then with that purification, it's easier to come to God. Okay. Very good. So let's close our eyes and sit up straight. We ask that Ganesha himself, remover of all spiritual obstacles, be with us to remove the obstacles that we have in our way to knowing our true self knowing our oneness of love with God, Swami. We place ourselves lovingly at the lotus feet of our dear Lord. You are the doer of all, you are the meditator within us. You do this, Swami. Oh, Take a breath in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Watch the breath as you exhale. And listen within. Breathe in so breathe out hum. Breathe in so breathe out hum. Feel it within you. I am that. Breathe in so. Breathe out. Hum. Do it yourself. A few moments. Feel it within.
if your mind wanders, just gently bring it back to the breath. Inhale. So. Exhaling. Hum. Feel the vibration within you. With each breath, feel how you're just relaxing. All the tensions of the day are disappearing. So. Hum. I am. Each breath feel like all the old karmas are just dissolving. Love is filling you. I am. That. And the divine. So, with each breath, breathe in God's light. So, I am that. Hum. Let it go. Let all tension leave your body. Hum. Just feel safe and secure in God's love, held by God's love. This breath, this divine breath that comes into us. So. Let this light in your heart be visualized with each breath. Let the light of love symbolized by a candle flare, let it burn brightly in your heart. Let it become like a miniature sun. The mind dwell on own beyond the breath. 
power of love within you, the power of God within you, Swami within you, come forth in the form of this light of love. Home in the mind. These two fence rails allow the mind to dissolve into the soul of who you are. Visualize this for a while. Let the mind dwell in it. I am. Home in this context means I am. Let everything else go. Go beyond the body to go beyond the mind. Home. Within this light, you can visualize Swami if you like, or whatever form you adore of God. Swami has said, all names are mine, all forms are mine. I am omnipresent everywhere, in everything, everyone, always. I am you. We are one. Mm. Let it all go. That light of love, that fire of love, that purifies, that cooling, soothing flame of love. Let it consume the heart center. The heart center is so open, and all there is is this light of love now. Flower petals are open to God within you, revealing the light of love our very nature. Love is God. God is love. Home in the mind will take you there. Home will take you home. Meditate within us, in Bhagavan. Now, from within the heart center, let there be like a spotlight of awareness that shines on the solar plexus within you, the third chakra. That's where the subconscious mind's roots are, the solar plexus. So within the 
inner subconscious within you as if you're looking inside down to the third chakra from your heart chakra. Let old memories, old thoughts, old experiences from any lifetime, past, even the present one, let them well up within you. Become aware of them. They unfold like a movie or a memory or a scene or a thought or a feeling. Let all these old feelings, old memories, pick one. Let it come fully into your awareness as you shine that light of awareness from your heart onto your subconscious mind, the third chakra. It's in every cell, but it's mostly in the third chakra, the roots of it. So, Swami, let us reveal the subconscious that holds us back. These old experiences, old memories. Old thoughts, old feelings. So just watch it like you would the clouds in the sky. Just watch it. You can feel it fully, but you're not it. You can be aware of it fully, all the feelings, without it touching the true you. Just watch it. Be observing it. And don't be afraid, dive in deep. Swami's here, why fear? But Swami's here. Boom. Experiences and even a little more deeply, really dive in and let it come up. That one thing you're following, that one thread that leads you to something that's been there in the subconscious mind for a very long time. Oh. So I was with you. Don't bounce off of it and forget it. Go and deep it, experience it, re-experience it. Don't be afraid. Feeling wise, you might be crying, you might be laughing, you might be sad or angry, whatever it is, it is. Don't be afraid. And these are only experiences, shadows of the past. They cannot hurt you any longer. They're just shadows in the night of the subconscious mind. Now we shine the light of day upon them, the light of God, the light of love. They reveal themselves, the shadows in the night. Oh. You feel, you fully experienced it as much as you can in this moment. 
and offer these memories, these old thoughts, these old feelings, these old experiences that are encrusted with stuck energy. Offer them into the fire of love within your heart, the yagna of spirit within you that Swami watches over. You can ask God in any form. You can ask God in the form you adore or formless to help you offer this into the fire of love and let these past burdens be dissolved, evaporated, burned out forever. Offer them into that fire. This is the true yakta true purification, the inner. It's hard to offer into the fire, ask Swami to help you, it will help. He's always ready, willing, and able. You only have to ask him once. If he doesn't respond once, ask him three times. Then he has to respond, that's the law of the universe. Burden us, O oh Lord. Unburden us, O oh Lord. Dissolve these past experiences. The light of love that burns within us from you. We offer them unto you. True sacrifice. Home. You feel like that experience is burned out when you fully offered it into the fire of love within you. Breathe that love in. Breathe God's love in. Breathe out God's love to all around you and within you. The cells of the body bathed in love. Where there was repressed energy, let there be love. Where there was fear, let there be love. Where there was subconscious, let there be God. What a door, Swami, heal us all. Your love. Now let's take another dive into the subconscious mind. We'll do this three times. And then Swami indicated to me last night another final way to do it. So three times we're gonna go in. So now let's go in for the second time into the subconscious mind in our soul plexus. Use the spotlight of your awareness fortified by the love, the light of love within your heart. Swami's hand, Swami's being within you. Look into that subconscious mind. Okay, God, what would you like to reveal to me that I've been holding on to from the past? What past memories, old experiences from even many lives back or this life, whatever it may be, show me what I need to let go of tonight. This moment, show me old feelings, old memories, old thoughts them well up within me, the subconscious. Oh, yes. Come on. Let us purify together. Let that come up and feel it as if it's happening right now. Feel it fully, as fully as you can possibly feel it. Don't be afraid. No shadows in the night. Not real at all. Just the mind's fear. False evidence appearing real. Don't bounce off of it. Don't go back into the heart of the light of love. 
just find protection and safety. Don't be afraid. Dive into it. Play in it. Walk around in it. Experience it again. These lives, these faults were not real. It was God doing it all the time to make us stronger. Teach us unconditional love in the midst of the deepest, the darkest experiences. Nothing to be afraid of. The rejections from parents or family members, deep, deep within us, it hurts so much. So let them come up. Disappointments of life. Pain, betrayals, hurts. Let them come up. They're no longer real. The shadows, memories, shadows of the past. Let them come up. Dive in deep. reality, God is the only doer. He knows the reason. He knows the season. Dive in deeper. Reveal my flaws, O oh God. Anger, lust, greed, envy, hatred. Reveal our flaws, O oh Lord. Reaction, revenge, sloth. Reveal our flaws, O oh Lord. Don't be afraid. It's not the true. Disappointment. Oh, go deeper. Dive in a little deeper. Don't be afraid. Violence. Now, ask God within you, ask Swami within you to help you throw this into the fire of love in your heart, the light of God. Fill that fire brightly and offer all of this into it. Stand at the edge of it, Swami in you, God in you, in any form that you adore, or formless. Place it into that yakna that fire, this yagna sacrifice of, are we sacrificing? We're sacrificing our garbage. Is that really a sacrifice? Just letting God purify us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, thank you, Swami, thank you, thank you, thank you. Antaryami, indwell within us. Hidden from view most of the time, but not now. No longer. Antaryami. Satchitananda. Let that memory dissolve 
in our fire well. Just keep throwing it in there until it's all in there. Just keep offering it until it's all in that fire. Don't be afraid. And if you think you can't do it because the stress of the mind is wandering away, then offer that stress and that wandering mind. Offer that too. Offer the evasive ego that doesn't want you to purify because it doesn't want to die, but it's just an illusion. Swami calls it just bubbles. Offer it all to the fire of love, God within you. When you feel you've offered it all, and then fill the space of your subconscious that held that with the love of God, God's love for you. Breathe it into that space, heal that space. Let all the cells be purified with this light of love. And be filled with the light of love. Oh God, it's all God. As plain as the day. Home. Let it all go. the worry to the light of love in the heart. Offer it all. Whatever holds you back, offer it into this fire of love within your heart. No need to be afraid. Swami is the doer. What is there to fear? I am here, he says. I am in you, around you, above you, below you. You can't escape from me. I am the omnipresent oneness of love, God within you. For the raindrop of the ocean, Back to the ocean. You are the ocean. We are the ocean. So breathe in deep and now let's go back again. Look into that subconscious mind once again. Place the spotlight of your awareness on your solar plexus. Swami, from your subconscious within me, reveal what you would like to dissolve this moment. Old memories, old thoughts, old feelings. From many lives past in this present lifetime, show me the way to unburden. Let the memory come up, an old, crusted, repressed thought or feeling. Let it come up in the experience with it. Experience it deeply while looking into the solar plexus with your awareness like a spotlight. Shining on that subconscious mind within you. God's subconscious within you. Swami says, from my subconscious within you. Old thoughts, dreams, memories, feelings.
Jati, jati, not this, not this, I am not this. I am Kama. Nothing can hurt the immortal you, the immortal love that you are. Nothing can touch the real you. Eternal, immortal, one with God. Go within, use that spotlight of awareness. Let it all come up from the cells themselves, the subconscious mind. Fear. Also, evidence appearing real. Ropes that look like snakes in the night, or just a rope in a day. Nothing can harm us. Experience it more deeply, more deeply, the families, the separation, the anxiety, the depression. Fear of life itself. Go in deeper, experience it like it's very, very real, just like a movie happening in this moment. When you go dive deep, dive to the root of it. Don't be afraid. Now, you feel ready. Offer that experience to the light of love within your heart center, that fire that purifies, that cooling, soothing, healing light of love, symbolized by that fire, that sun within your heart. Ask for Swami's help, ask for God's help to offer you this past, these memories, these experiences, these old things. Ask for their help to offer it into the fire of love, the chakra. Sacrifice of the mind. Throw it in that fire. You don't need it. Just old garbage. Incinerate it. Let it evaporate. The energy be free. Let our energies be freed. Now breathe in that love. God loves each and every one of us because God is each and every one of us. Love is God. God is love. 
breathe it in. And when you breathe it out, let it travel through every cell and all around you. Bathe in that sunlight of love. Be healed by that sunlight of love. That is God. Rest in it like you would bath water, warm, perfectly comfortable. Bath of love. Bathe in that love. And it soak into you, every cell, every molecule, every atom. That is the true you. Now let's go one step further. Swami revealed to me a couple of nights ago when I was meditating like this. He added one more step near this. Go back into the subconscious mind. Look into that awareness with your awareness. Look into the soul of Lexus once again. Use the love within you as a spotlight. And then ask Swami, ask God within you to offer up the ego itself into this fire of love. The very basis of the Maya, the mind, he'll help you. It could happen right this moment in full or only in part, but it will start. Sincerely offer that ego, find it, highlight it, the sense of selfishness within you. Don't be afraid of it. It's a sense of my and mine, or I'm doing it, I'm important. Any sense of that reveals the source of it. The source is the ego. Find it. Ask Swami to lift it up within you, with your help. You're both doing it together. Can't do it alone. You have to be willing. So put your hands on it, grab it, and say, Swami, I offer this ego of individuality, of selfishness and doership and the mire of separation. I offer this to you in the fire of love within my heart. I offer this now, help me, Swami, you are the doer within us. You do it, the ego itself, we place in that fire, healing fire of love, the supreme yagna, the supreme sacrifice, don't be afraid, because it's never been the real you. Just be willing, oh, love itself. Will reveal the truth of who you really are, not the ego, personality, body, mind complex. That's the bubble. That's the illusion. I am that I am. The light of love and the source of that. Offer that ego. Look deeply into yourself until you really got it. And you can take a piece of it or the whole thing with Swami's grace and offer it right into that yagna of love, that fire of God within you. The burning bush that Moses stood before is that fire within you, within each of us. 
I am that I am. Aham Ramasmi. Oh. Now let the sunshine of love within your heart come the fullness every cell of your temple of your body, all lit with love. From the tips of the toes to the top of the head, let it flow, let it shine. It's all God, it's all God, it's all God, it's all God, it's all God. It's all God. Oh, my Father, Mother, God. We are that we are. I am that I am. Let it flow out the top of the head, all around you, shining like the sun through the transparent boundaries of the body, the temple of love. I am that I am. Swami's. Let it all go. All the illusion. I am that I am. Rod in the day symbolizes the resurrection of spirit from the limitations of the physical death of the ego to the birth of God oneness of love, we are the light of love, incarnate. Of all serve all, whoever comes to mind, see them in this light, friends, family, strangers, beloved, in so-called enemies, see them all, love and party, light of love, I am that I am, we are that we are.
wherever you are in your consciousness, pray to Swami in all forms or any form. Pray, oh God, oh Swami, please lift me to the next level of being until I am totally free. Totally free. You are totally free. You always were. I'm now and always will be. Um, bless me. Swami's grace is with us. Oh. Keep letting go. Love is the dissolver of all karma. And unworthiness come. You're born worthy. That's all it took. The gift of life on earth made us all worthy. God oneness, love, living in love. Oh, let it all go. So now begin to breathe this love back to the body. Make this a temple of love and light throughout the day and night. Love and action. That's God on earth. Breathe it back into the temple of the body. Take your time. Make this a lighthouse of love. Giving and forgiving. Even your own self, or it never was actually your doing. Only God is the doer. Surrender to that. Sharanati Swami. Sharanati. Koti Prana Swami. Forever grateful to your grace. Your love, your ever grateful. Oh, Swami, thank you. Living in each of us and on us. Thank you.
We'll breathe that back down into the body. And back into the temple of love. Back into the heart center, the altar on that temple. That temple, the altar, the eternal flame of love burns brightly on that altar through the day and through the night. I don't know what the experience, waking, dreaming, deep sleep, or otherwise, we are always one with that love, one with God. We do not know what the mind may know or not know. It doesn't matter. There is only God here. There's only God. There's only God. So coming back in, coming back in with that awareness, coming back in. Breathing once again into the body, breathing back into the body now. Thank God for his grace, our grace. Thank Shiva Shakti. God in the form of Mother Nature, Mother Earth, and all feminine Shakti. God in the form of all Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma, and all the Breathing back in. Take a good two or three minutes before opening the eyes while we pray. Let's spread this light of love throughout the universe, especially the earth. And may all beings be happy. May they be healthy. May they be prosperous. May all their needs may be met. May all beings need to be met. May all beings' dreams of goodness come true. Oh. What you receive to give out to life, to love to all beings, and there be peace. Oh. In the golden age of love, Satyuga, dawn on earth, this moment and henceforth. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Take your time to open before opening the eyes. Whoops. We went 10 minutes over, sorry. <laughs> For those who have to go, that's understandable. For those who would like to stay a moment and share their experiences or any questions, we're here. Would anybody like to share what they experienced? Take your time to come back. Ramel, this is Ramesh. Ramesh, hi. How are you? Uh, very good now. <laughs> Yes, what would you like to say? It was very pleasant. It was very pleasant. I had a busy work day today. Mm. 
and having felt like I'm fairly rejuvenated after I did this. And uh, there was a lot of noises and a lot of other things going on around me. I was able to focus very comfortably. But uh, to be very honest, I don't meditate as many times as they should, but I don't do that. I try several things that happen and I'm more of a person who like to do more like a work meditation where I think about Swami, think about these things when I'm doing work, when I'm doing other things. Mm, karma yogi. I'm more like that. I'm doing some carpentry work or yard work or anything that I'm doing or even my regular work I'm doing. When there are some repetitive work that is happening, my mind automatically goes there and that's how I experience good, feel good, feeling feeling of goodness. So this has been a fantastic experience. It was a very nice way. We both are phenomenal guides. You know, you kind of feel that the guide is always so good. Swami's wow. grace, Swami's grace, we'd be nothing without him, nothing. Yeah. We're nothing with him, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> awesome, awesome, thank you. Thank you too very much. Anybody else like to share what they experienced or say anything? Um, I, I, I did enjoy it very much. I felt very peaceful and calm. I have a couple of questions. Sure. So how often do you recommend doing the cleansing meditation? Uh, about once a week okay. is good. You know? And then you mentioned there are like seven types of meditation. Mm -hmm. um, to, what are they? And do you recommend trying different ones or stick to one? What are you? Whatever one works for you best. So there's Soham meditation. There's name and form meditation. There's mantric meditation. There's Jyoti meditation. There's Dharana, which is candle flame. And then closing the eyes and seeing that inside. And just focusing on that image with Om. There's the subconscious cleansing meditation. Um, we, we just give a survey of pretty much everything Swami's talked about. And then, you know, you feel inside what works for you. And, and it does change over the years, I've found. Um, but it's, it's uh, definitely the first, first steps, as Swami says, is, is the name and form. And, and to, you know, that's devotion to the form. And then he likes us to go beyond the form into, into it, uh, uh, to ask, who am I? And to find that I, the, the Atma. Self-inquiry meditation or Yani meditation. But Swami always in the end, see all these different meditational types are concentration and contemplation. Concentration leads to contemplation. And then contemplation leads to the state of consciousness which is known as meditation which is beyond name beyond form and that's just being and then while we experience that we can't force it it just happens by itself we just go beyond the mind that's meditation but also swami says meditation is 24 7 every time you think of god you think of your relationship to god and you emphasize that relationship, that oneness ultimately, that is meditation. So ultimately, meditation becomes 24 seven. So there's also japa and going, you know, do japa and then all of a sudden you let go of the japa because you slip beyond it, you know. You can chant Gayatri, Om, you know, a 10,008 times. But the only time that it was really meaningful was when you slipped beyond the mantra. That became meditation. And that becomes meditation. So all these things, all these ways, 
These are Swami's teachings of meditative ways, ways to experience the oneness of love. Pick one, Thank you. anyone. And, and over the years, ours have changed. So at the beginning, I was doing a lot of mantric meditation. Then I started just doing OM, and then I started just doing OM in the light. And then I slipped into just going into OM and just letting go and going beyond name and going beyond form. And all the way along, Swami's there to guide us. He'll, he'll guide us the entire way. He's always going to be there guiding us until we come home. And even then, he'll be there because that's who we are. So no, he never leaves. <laughs> Jesus. You can't get rid of him even if you try. <laughs> Believe me, at times I try. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to share or say? Yes, I enjoyed the, and the meditation very much. It was very relaxing. Um, and I do have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a problem in a relationship today um, that possibly that may have originated in a past life, many, many mm -hmm. lives ago, mm -hmm. and there's some residual in that today, mm -hmm. uh, Similar to a past life regression, can this meditation be used to heal those problems? Absolutely. Yes, you can ask Swami within you, show me the dysfunction between me and my loved one or my relationship partner or whoever it is, my father, mother, brother, sister, or friend or not friend or enemy, so-called enemy, show me and he'll show you. He'll show you what's needed, but he'll ask you to love and forgive in the end unconditionally love and unconditionally forgive and let go because all these dysfunctional relationships have one purpose in common dissolving the ego letting go of the ego the sense of i'm right you're wrong that's ego or i'm being mistreated by you if it's not physical abuse which you should always step away from in any form but if it's the sense of mental or emotional abuse you know you don't have to buy into it because hey, this shoe doesn't fit. I'm not going to wear it. But you can stand there unconditionally loving the person while they're abusing you. <laughs> that happened, right? It happened with me and it's happened with Roseanne right in front of Swami. Swami didn't do it, but people did it right in front of him. And he watched. How are you going to react to this? <laughs> I mean, this was physically, he was standing there. <laughs> it was amazing to me that it even happened. But it's because it's within us. There's some form of it. Whatever we see, Swami says, is a reaction and a, a mirror. That that's what some small part of what we're seeing in the other person is in us. And that if we can just find it and clean it up in us, then it's a lot easier not to react and respond to them because the, the it's just not there in us anymore. We don't have to see it on the outside and react to it. Because who is it that's actually being hurt or abused or, or being insulted? Who is it? How can that, who you really are, be ever insulted or abused? How is it not possible? So this is, Swami says, he puts us together with, in relationship with people in different relationships to rub out our egos sandpaper <laughs> <laughs> rolling rocks said, in, sandpaper. in the water smoothing each other out like that. thank god otherwise how would we be free how would it happen i'd just like to thank the two of you and also um sister Cyprusana for doing all this when when you first started and then had the challenge and brought us up to here it's brought me back to daily meditation and I haven't had that in years. Oh. And I don't know if you know how much that's meant. I know there are probably many of us who have come back to daily meditation just because you gave us this structure. And, and uh, that's, that's Cyprusana just as much as anyone else. Yes. I, I thank you very much. Um, and I can't tell you what a good goodness that's been. So, so no, thank you. And let's continue. 
I mean, why give up now? Not stopping. Not stopping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. There are so many occasions Swami has given us, so we have a challenge that we can still continue to meet. <laughs> it's a wonderful format. And also, I've noticed that people from all over the country have, have joined. Yeah, it's all over the like, because of the unity conference. Uh, Brother Ramesh was telling us it's not at the end of the conference. We need to continue this after the conference. And you uh, graciously agreed to do the meditation. And we are a group of people, not just the people here, but people who don't come also are participating in the meditation. Uh, though. So we oh, had beautiful. six people who joined us. Well, I think we should all continue meditating together as much as possible until Prema Sai Baba reveals himself. Wouldn't that be a magnificent moment? Is it going to happen? He's already here. I just feel it in my bones. And I had certain experiences and some deep friends of mine who were in with Swami in the 70s also said he's already here. He's not the one that they say he is on the video YouTube things. <laughs> <laughs> but he's here. And let's continue doing our sadhana deeply and intensely until we all again meet at the feet of Prema Sai Baba. We all will. Sai Ram, I would like to also echo Brother David's uh, comment about um, Thanks to Sai Prasanna, thanks to you both. You've inspired the daily meditation and the discipline and routine. And uh, which sometimes uh, due to many other lame reasons, we lack the discipline and it has brought a lot of discipline, at least to me. For that, I extend my gratitude to both of you. And especially since you introduced the cleansing meditation, I've been practicing that at least twice a week especially the days when uh, things are really, really, really all over the map in my mind and my mind is rushing everywhere and is filled with the, the tasks to do, the, the things that left unresolved. The cleansing meditation does bring the level of anxiety and bring the level of uh, uh, rush to a peaceful start to the day. So thank you very much for introducing that to us. Sai you you were, Sai Ram, thank you. You remind me of something very, very important to point out. Many of you know this already, but I just want to point it out. We are radio receivers as well as radio transmitters. So our mind will be filled with the anxiety of others around us. Don't take it as your own. Don't own it. Recognize what's your stuff and what's other people's stuff, your loved ones, your friends, your family, your associates in business, the world in general is in a state of an anxiety attack because of this pandemic. So don't take it on. Don't absorb it and think it's your own stuff. It's not. Just let it go. Say, God, you're in charge. You take care of it. And then deal with your own inner subconscious and you know, let it go, let it go, let it go. As it comes up, we just keep letting it go. Because ultimately, it's only fog in the night, this illusion of a life separate from God. There is no separate. There is not. There is not. And in you, right this moment, you know that. Every one of you, in your heart of hearts, know intimately you are God. You are the raindrop that has returned to the ocean already, each and every one. You intimately, absolutely know this. Don't let the fog of the mind hide the glory of the sun within you, the glory of God within you, the glory of love within us. Don't ever let it again. It's just an illusion. It's just the fog in the night. It's not true at all. So with that, Jay Sai Ram. Sai thank you. Jay Sai Ram. Thank you, brother. Thank you for doing this every month. And we eagerly look forward to the next session. And I just want to take the moment to tell everybody who gathered here and all the 60 people who participated in offering 1,008 hours for Swami's Aradhana. 
we crossed that last year, this Tuesday. So congratulations to everyone for their persistence and let's continue. This has been great. Thank you. Bye Thanks. Ram. Thank you. 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 Thank you.